Yesterday, I ran across the vast plains and became a gaucho, the Brazilian cowboy. The centuries worth of the gaucho traditions and a brotherhood like no other. The gauchos or Brazilian cowboys were the driving force that made today's Brazil. For my last journey in Brazil, I'm off to see the great waters that run through the three countries of South America. Brazil is South America's largest country. I start my day at the Parana River, the great waters that run across the South American continent. We will pass Puerto Rico, located north of the Parana River, and go across Ilha Grande National Park to the Iguazu Falls, where the Parana and the Iguazu Rivers meet. We begin our journey on the great waters from Puerto Rico, which is upstream of the Parana River. We're off to the second longest river in South America after the Amazon River. The Parana River is a great body of water that runs through Brazil, Argentina, and Paraguay. It is a shrine for all fishermen and a place that cannot be reached by man's hand. This is wild Brazil, my last journey to the great waters of the Parana and the Iguazu. We start today's journey on a bus to get to the Parana River. Brazil is 38 times the size of the Korean Peninsula. This means that today's bus ride in Brazil will be a very long one. It will take around 10 hours on the road. <laughs> After about five hours since I took off, I fall asleep to better prepare for the big day that is awaiting me here in Brazil. It's time to get off the bus and get onto a car. This place is difficult even for Brazilians to reach. We need to go another two hours on this road. We didn't even see any houses on our way to Puerto Rico. Wait, is that a Brazilian biker ahead of us? He seems out of the ordinary. I approach him because of his funny-looking attire. I find out he is a fisherman, not a biker. He's getting ready to brag. And he takes off, although not quite like the wind. I find something interesting at the river. It's a movable bridge. It's similar to Korea's Getbe Bridge, which you can find in Sokcho, Gangwon Province. What's different about this one is that it uses the electric power of the ship to move the bridge, not people. Interestingly, I spot a man fishing at someone else's place of business. For a hobby, 
He looks like he's in paradise with his free ride and fishing in the wind. He offers to show me what he has caught. He says he's only caught a baby fish and he needs to catch a big fish. Puerto Rico is a small town by the river located upstream of the Parana River. This is a huge catfish called a pintado. It turns out to be a phone booth. Will it be possible to catch a pintado here at the Parana River? Today, we will certainly make it happen. The town's atmosphere is out of the ordinary. Perhaps there was a typhoon earlier. But we still need to fish since we're here at the Parana River. The Parana River, a shrine for the fishermen, is extremely quiet today. Should I give up on fishing today? Well, between that sitting sun, I'm on fire, I'm born to run. You looked at me and I was... But there are people actually fishing. It seems they just caught a big one. Could it be a pintado? Whoa, stop! Quer uma Ah, é só para filmar mesmo, é só para filmar. The fisherman brags about his catch here and there. I think I can catch one myself. I should ask the Brazilian expert about his technique. He's using sausages as fish bait. The fish have quite the palate but it's also used for a different purpose. It's time for me to find a good spot now. I've caught many fish during my childhood days when I enjoyed fishing. But will I be able to catch a pintado? I don't have much of a chance with this fishing rod I'm using now. It appears he's caught a big one. He's really pulling hard on that rod. It's the same one as what the fisherman caught earlier. I return after catching a single fish. But still, I should brag about it, right? Now that's a nice way to express his feelings. A small boat is coming to shore. People are loading a bunch of goods on the boat. Where are they going? People take a small boat to a nearby village to shop for things and then return home to their island. On the Parana River, there exists both an island that people live on and a national park. I'm off to the Ilha Grande National Park, the national park of the Parana River. 
formerly a residence of the Garyani tribe, it was designated as a national park in 1997. I decided to follow the Parana River and go into the national park. However, farming is prohibited inside the park. To protect the riverside, farming is prohibited at least within a 200 meter radius from the river. We arrive at an island inside the national park. Maravilhoso, é lindo, muito peixe que tem. É bom porque não tem muito função. O povo não enche o saco. Não... Ah, velho. You can only get to the island by passing through the narrow road of a primeval forest. The way into the island is almost like a maze. As I pass through the narrow road with great difficulty, I reach an island that looks like a peaceful lake moments later. The Parana River that runs through the primeval forest is free from the hands of people. The waterway, as it flows through, offers living organisms with a habitat and provides people with a place to reside and farm. There is someone living inside the National Park. He is the only living person alone in the park, which is 1.3 times larger than the size of Seoul. He is the Robinson Crusoe of the Parana River. He says he built his own house here. It's a two-story house. There is a reason why he built it that way. Na altura aqui, dessa altura aí, por causa da enchente. Por enquanto, até hoje, só encontrei uma enchente que deu aqui. Passou onde nós estamos aqui, a água passou. Mas em 82 foi a maior. Ela cobria a casa. He tells me that heavy rainfall makes the river overflow, flooding the entire first floor. Vladmil is a fishing fanatic. His delight in fishing led him to live here for the past eight years. You may expect life here to be free, but there are restrictions that come with living in a national park. He lives off raising poultry because he's not allowed to farm. And he needs to throw out the trash at a designated time after thoroughly separating out recyclables. Guests visit in the middle of my conversation with Vladmil. It is his family. My mother, my tia, ali, amigo, amiga e amigo. Amigo da onda. This woman is Vladmil's mother. Sim, <laughs> Coreia, que chique! Nossa, nós tem coreano aqui. Vocês canta? Canta qual música? Coreano, canta muito bonito, hein? Então brasileiro. Exatamente. Português. All mothers are the same, no matter where you go. Gelo. Esse é do Paraguai. Today is also a special day. It's Vladmil's birthday. Perhaps his family wishes for him to glance at the time of the world.
Nice. Bom, deixa eu parar, né? The Parana River is also a place that offers flood mill with daily feasts. This is shrimp he got this morning. He says it's for a meal he's preparing for his family. There is no special seasoning. After living here by himself for eight years, he became used to making simple dishes with the fish of the river. It may be a very simple dish, but it was very delicious. Vladmil's mother sets the table with a birthday meal she prepared as soon as we finish Vladmil's dish. Of course, feijoda is part of the meal. It is a typical Brazilian's favorite bean dish. I also scoop heaping portions of it onto my plate. Temperada. Muito bom. Vladmil wants to show me something right after the meal. He says it's a machine that makes the noise of gunshots when you light up the container after pouring alcohol in it. It's time to go now, but I can't leave just yet because of his wonderful family. I give them a present I brought from Korea as a sign of appreciation. I already became quite fond of these people. They also told me that they would keep it well and remember me. I feel the warm affection from the Brazilian family. It felt almost like going back home after visiting relatives. Brazilians who enjoy the vast land and water are both relaxed and affectionate. Going back down along the riverside, I start to see the bottom of the river. The water is so clear that it was almost see-through. The water level is very low. The water from all the way over there is what's pushing the sand from the bottom of the river. Moses' miracle was not just confined to the sea. The waterway gradually forms a sand dune, just as memories pile on day by day. The Parana River once suffered from a history of war. Brazil, Argentina and Uruguay formed an alliance in a war against Paraguay for acquisition of land. There is a song I've always wanted to play if I ever came to the Parana River. It's a song that Brazilians also know. Paraguay and Brazil, the most famous war against Brazil, and the most famous war against Brazil, 
어, 그런 곳이기도 하고 정말 많은 사람들이 전쟁에서 되게 치열했었고 뭐 파라과이는 그 전쟁을 통해서 뭐 인구의 뭐 75%가 뭐 사망이 되고 뭐 이런 아주 슬픈 역사를 갖고 있지 않습니까? Guera. A border town that faces the two countries. Guerra, a border town in Paraguay, embraces the Parana River in the middle and faces both Brazil and Paraguay. The land you see in the distance is Paraguay. The Parana River has become a sturdy bridge that connects the two countries. There is a barge in Guerra, a border town of Paraguay that allows one to travel in both directions. Do you see the flag of Paraguay? I'm on that bus that's on the barge. It's an international bus that crosses through the two countries' borders. There are, of course, both Brazilians and Paraguayans riding on the bus. These women are going back to Paraguay after buying baby products in Brazil. It only takes 30 minutes to arrive via the barge. Perhaps the two countries that fought so hard for land a century ago were able to call a truce through the Parana River. This is Salto del Guerra, a border city in Paraguay. In this village, there is a huge shopping center Maybe because it's a border town. Although it's in South America, like Brazil, it has a completely different atmosphere. He offers me tea as I tell him I'm from Korea. It is chimarro, the same tea I had in Brazil. The once mighty Paraguay lost a lot of things after the war, but they kept their culture of kindness. These Paraguayans catch fish at the Parana River. The Parana River is a place of friendship that connects the two countries. For my last destination in Brazil, I'm going to the Iguazu Falls, which faces the three countries and is south of Guerra. I see the great waters of the Iguazu Falls in the distance. The name Iguazu is derived from the Guarani words that mean water and big. 
It is one of the world's three greatest falls, along with the Niagara Falls and Africa's Victoria Falls. It seems as if all the waters of the earth join to form the Iguazu Falls. The greatest linguist in the world could not be able to express in words the magnificence of the Iguazu Falls. It comes down aggressively, not leaving a single drop of water. People come to see the Iguazu Falls, even at the risk of becoming soaked in water. People from all over the world come to see the great spectacle of the Iguazu Falls. With my entire body, I receive the spirit of the water that falls fiercely as if to swallow everything nearby. There are various methods to enjoy the Iguazu Falls. I've come to see the falls from the sky above. What will the Iguazu Falls look like from up in the air? I'm finally off to see the great waters from the sky. This is the Parana River, the Great Water. The Parana River flows to meet the Iguazu River. The two grand rivers join to make the world's greatest falls, the Iguazu Falls. The waterfall rises to the sky as if an enraged god cut off the river's stream. The devil's throat is said to have swallowed natives who are riding a boat down the river. The Iguazu has a force that could even defeat the sky. The Iguazu Falls borders the three countries of Brazil, Argentina and Paraguay. They say that this is a bridge of friendship that connects Brazil and Argentina. I'm now crossing over this bridge to get to Argentina. I head towards the Devil's Throat when I arrive in Argentina. You can see the Devil's Throat in Argentina. That is the Devil's Throat, a place where water bursts out. I wonder how the Devil's Throat will look compared to the view from the sky. It is said that your worries go away if you stare at it for a minute. You can overcome all of life's barriers if you stare at it for 10 minutes. But it will take away your soul if you look at it for 30 minutes. This is the Devil's Throat. I watched it for 10 minutes and fought hard to stop my gaze afterwards. I met the Iguazu Falls and now visit the Guarani tribe, who were once the protagonists of the Iguazu legacy.
Juan Camilo. Juan Camilo, Samuel. Samuel. Mucho placer. Anima placer. He is the chief of the Guarani village. The Guarani people are of the Indio tribe and have been residing on the Parana River for centuries. They make you undergo a unique ceremony once you enter the village. The chief offers me some chimaro. Although they look different, talk different, and drink tea in different ways, they welcome me with the same warmth. That night I go to a theater where I am able to see Brazil, Paraguay, and Argentina at the same time. The performance begins with a Brazilian theme, The Legend of Iguazu. It is followed by Paraguay's traditional dance, The Passion of South America. It feels a little familiar to me, maybe because I already visited Paraguay. The next part of the performance is something extraordinary. It is an Argentine dance. Then I am called up on stage. I was so nervous that I would get hit but the audience continues to clap and leaves the stage themselves. I thought all of my hair would fall out. My wild Brazilian journey is wild all the way to the end. Every moment of my journey here was marvelous. It was as if I discovered hidden treasures on the way. My childhood fantasies became a reality as I became a cowboy running across the grasslands and saw for myself the paradise of wildlife. Brazil is the land of dreams and of endless explorations.